Very much, Mr. Yes, sir. Okay, the exact committee meeting for today, Tuesday, August 30th, is called over is approximately 6.05. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Present. Present. Madam Clerk, do we have a quorum? Let's move on. Okay. Uh, you guys can, you know how you want to do it. Come on up. Okay. And uh, Chris, you got them hooked up to these monitors and stuff, right? Okay. All right. Uh, and just for the record, say who you are and, and what uh, agency you're connected with, okay? All right. Does this, micro, does this microphone up here work straight? straight yeah, straight? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, ladies. Tonight, we're going to go over the planning process. Can you follow you through this or, or, or skip over? Okay, go ahead. Survey. 
use the results of that community survey to come to um, come up with the vision, which is the themes and principles that, that we would use to guide the plan. Using that, using that vision, we went out into the community again for visioning activities where we delve further into that vision so that we can come up with recommendations, which are the strategies and action steps for the system-wide recommendations and park-specific recommendations. We took those recommendations and put them into implementation to help the city in order to find partners and funding. Next, we put all those pieces together to create the draft map. Just had to speak up a little bit. So the purpose <laughs> of the East Cleveland Parks and Green Space Plan was that the City of East Cleveland applied for and received an award of professional planning services from town planning to draft a Parks and Green Space Plan. As part of that application, the City of East Cleveland recognized that improved and enhanced parks would help with the potential to increase development, home values, and be a catalyst for new development, thereby improving the quality of life and the surrounding area. So the Parks and Green Spaces plan outlined a framework to enhance the parks and amenities so that the city of East Cleveland will become a welcoming community space for services and programs, support and strengthen community efforts to provide physical and mental health, promote leisure activities and alternatives, foster an appreciation of the environment and sustainability, bolster community engagement, and foster a sense of community pride. During the current conditions phase, we found that there are over, there's roughly 213 acres of parkland in East Cleveland, encompassed in seven parks. That equates to about 12.3 acres of parkland per thousand residents. And that 90% of those residents are within a 10 mile, or excuse me, a 10 minute or a half mile walk of the park. There's 2.4 miles of trails in East Cleveland. And, and there is 99% of streets with sidewalks. That, in, that includes streets with one or two side, two sidewalks per street. During the community engagement process, during the community engagement process, there was three tiers of engagement. The first was that we sent out a community survey. That community survey included a, um, a, a, a flyer, a flyer with a QR code. And also um, we sent out, we put out park signs within, within Forest Hill Park and some of those city parks. The next part of our community engagement involved activity boards at the public library that we had there for that we had there for a month. And also the Salvation Army 
during August of 2021 and October of 2021. We also were out during, we were also out during community engagement at Patterson Park and also at the Coit Road Farmers Market to get more engagement about the parks in Greenfield Park. During that engagement, we came up with the vision for the parks. That vision includes four themes, comfort, community, catalyst, and connection. Each of these themes break down into the various principles. So under comfort, parks are gonna be well-maintained and parks are welcoming and safe. For the community theme, the principles are parks leverage partners, parks involve and engage community members, and park information is readily available. Under the connected theme, the principle is parks are safely and easily accessible. And the catalyst theme, parks support the city's vision for the future, and parks have appropriate facilities and amenities. We took some quotes that were directly from community engagement, and they're each color coded to each of the comfort, to each of the themes, to each of the four themes to help us guide making our recommendations. What we're going to do tonight is we're just going to go over a few of those recommendations. There were over There are over 22 strategies and over 102 action steps. So we're not gonna go over all of them. But each of the recommendations include strategies and action steps for each theme and principle. And they're gonna include a system-wide recommendation, which is for all of the parks throughout East Cleveland, and then go into park-specific recommendations, which is gonna be specific to each park within East Cleveland. So for the comfort theme, our two, our two strategies, excuse me, our two principles were parks are well-maintained and parks are welcoming and safe. I'm only gonna cover a few of the strategies. For instance, the strategy to increase, the strategy to increase resources and funding needed to help care for and maintain East Cleveland parks. That would include, the action step for that would include to determine the current capacity in terms of budget, staffing, and equipment, and also to identify any future partners or organizations that can help with bringing in support for the parks. Another strategy under comfort would be to inspect and evaluate park amenities at all East Cleveland parks on an annual basis. That includes using a park inventory that was part of the park use um, um, section of the plan to help to kind of see what's up if what's in the parks and try to keep track of what needs to be updated as needed and then create a rating system to kind of see what the conditions are, so that way you can know which part or which amenities need to be updated. And then designate some volunteers or staff to do those annual park evaluations every year. Another strategy, ensure park features enhance the well-being of park users and enhance the overall appeal of East Cleveland Park. That can include including public art and amenities such as, or other amenities and features like basketball courts, crosswalks, walking trails. Establish a public partner, public private partnership to provide Wi Fi at each East Cleveland park. And then enhance safety within this park by installing pedestrian scale lighting, which is just lighting throughout the park to keep them safe and to provide safety and then also provide blue light and urban control boxes. The next theme is community. Under community, the principle is parks leverage partner. Under this theme, excuse me, under this principle, the strategy is partner with different community organizations and institutions to ensure equity to meet the various needs of that's partnering with your educational partners like the city of East Cleveland Schools and the public library. And to kind of offer, to help offer educational programs and accessibility programs or summer camps inside of each of East Cleveland parks. 
and it worked with East Charles Cleveland and Detroit continued to work with East Charles Cleveland and Detroit Royal Farmers Market to increase access to healthy foods. So for the theme, excuse me, for the strat, for the theme, excuse me, for the principle of parks engaged and involved residents, the strategy here is to engage community members to periodically stay up to date on the events and programs that they decide. That would, one of the ways you could do that is to assign someone internally or seek someone externally to help with community engagement and outreach efforts. Encourage residents and visitors to provide feedback. And to enhance the communications to target and engage specific age groups such, such as youth or with seniors. And to get to gather feedback to get their specific Another strategy is to engage community members to periodically stay up to date on events and the programs they desire. Again, work with the Cleveland City Schools, get feedback from families um, to see what their needs are. Right? Create satisfaction surveys and, and have them at city led parties and events that to just keep track of the attendance and satisfaction of those attending. Publicize community feedback on the city's website. And place signage with QR code throughout East Cleveland Park that allow park users to provide feedback and report and share their ideas. The next strategy would be to provide different opportunities for community members to get involved and take action on active roles in East Cleveland. A way to do that is to develop a volunteer page on the city's website that helps to list the different types of volunteer activities available and have it and have a sign up or a friendly sign up platform so it's easy for them to do that. And work with the East Cleveland schools to implement a youth council or an advisory group that can help promote those efforts and to help plan events. The next theme is connected. So for this principle, parks are safely and easily connected. The strategy here is to develop a citywide all-purpose trail network that connects neighborhoods to include parks, green spaces, and the regional parks. You can do this by partnering with neighboring communities, the regional entities to develop an all-purpose trail connection between each of the East Cleveland properties and with the city park that was created um, in partnership with the regional sewer district. Develop an all purpose trail connection to the Idaho Greenways network and work with the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority to kind of prioritize those public transit stops to make them more safer for people that are taking the buses for park districts. Improve safety and access to East Cleveland parks and green spaces through infrastructure and streetscape improvements. You want to evaluate the crosswalking signals within a 10 mile walk zone and prioritize the areas for repeat and maintenance. And then prioritize the safety of the users by using location and um, enhanced intersections and crosswalks so that you're providing ADA compliance and access and other elements to help. Just make it a little safer for all residents, no matter their ability. Enhance safety and access to East Cleveland Parks and Green Spaces through programs and education. So apply for grant funding for pedestrian and bicycle enhancements. Continue to update the city capital improvement plan. Uh, continue to continue progress on the MOACA TLCI funding for improvements and throughput. And initiate a adopt a path program allowing residents and community groups to get involved in the path effort. And finally, theme or the final theme is catalyst. These recommendations are citywide, system wide, involves each of the parks. These recommendations help to bring the parks up to a baseline. So the strategy is, excuse me, the principle is parks help support the city's vision for the future. 
the strategies here are used for improving the control voice growth and support improving these keyword community users and to leverage park improvements to help encourage redevelopment opportunities. So here you want to utilize, continue to utilize the recommendations from the city of East Kingdom Disney project and align those for land use recommendations, redevelopment and infrastructure recommendations. You want to identify the best location for redevelopment that's walkable, commercial, and mixed use districts. And you want to promote and market the development and redevelopment of East Kingdom Parks and business corridors like the, like the business corridor that's near Holly Avenue, but towards the north of the city. And then you want to, you want to identify specific improvements for each East Kingdom Park. All the parks, this is for each and every park. And again, this is for that baseline to bring them up to a baseline so that all the parks are connected. You want to ensure that maintenance and removal of damaged amenities are kept up. You want clear and consistent signage and wayfinding at park entrances. You want to ensure that landscaping and or fencing is there to help to identify the boundaries and to protect users. Ensure that there is lighting and emergency call boxes, trash and recycling receptacles, including for all cleaning amenities, water fountain, fountain, seating, and bike racks, and consider enhanced crosswalks around the park to save access. So these were system wide recommendations. So these are recommendations that should be done each and every park. Laura is going to go over some more park specific recommendations for each of the city parks. Nicole. So we will be going over some park specific recommendations. Uh, these are for six of the East Kingdom parks, Patterson Park, MLK Civic Center, Holly Park, Man Avenue Park, Superior Hill Park, and Forest Hill Park. Um, for each of them, we will go over a little bit just, um, just to keep everyone on the same page of a little bit of the current conditions of the park, what amenities are there, and then we'll go over more so the recommendations. So for Patterson Park, as many of you know, it's the second largest park that comes to Cleveland. It is hosts a lot of events and it actually has a lot of amenities, uh, such as the stage. It also has a concession stand. Um, it has uh, basketball courts and then it also has a tennis court. However, it's in various states. As you can see with the uh, one labeled as one where the tennis courts and outdoor bar. Around the park, there is some trail network, however, that is a little bit incomplete in some sections. And around the outer edge of the park, there are some vacant, uh, vacant lots. So within the um, plan, we kept, we actually took these specific images from it. Each park has a cheat list of all the different recommendations, which shows the different time frames that you can put in, uh, whether it's a short term recommendation. If it's medium term or if it's something that needs to be thought of long term, um, there's also space to keep track of what funding is available, whether it's either going to be internal or if there's grants needed, and also keeping track of the status of the park. On the right, you see an image of what those recommendations look like. These are purely conceptual when it comes to looking into specific recommendations for improvements. Uh, it really depends on what the community actually wants and what those improvements would look like. This is just an idea of how those recommendations would be based out. So for Patterson Park specifically, um, one of the biggest ideas for this was to reorganize Patterson Park into three specific areas, combining like amenities uh, to make the uh, experience a little bit more enjoyable within those areas and make it enjoyable for all ages. So it's three specific areas. Uh, the first one would be the active play area labeled as A. Currently, that's where the uh, tennis courts currently are. Um, the idea would be to replace the uh, tennis courts and potentially add some more active uses in there, such as the basketball courts, relocating them there, adding a play set. That's something that could be mentioned, needing more playgrounds for kids. Um, perhaps a splash pad, could they mention wanting a pool, but a splash pad is another um, a lower cost option um, that could keep people uh, that could be used within the park. 
And then also relocating the workout station across the street. Yeah. This allows the whole family to enjoy this space um, and also have, have one permanent space. The next area would be the performance space and plaza space. So this is already kind of already being used that way with the stage currently there, and that has been um, maintained pretty well and also the concession stand. So the idea is that the building was already there and also being in the plaza space with picnic tables and areas where people can sit and enjoy uh, the performance. The last space is labeled C, and currently this is already an open space. It's maintaining that, that space for uh, passive leisure, but also for bigger events. Uh, there's different events that have already been placed here. However, at night time it does get very dark as there's not a lot of lighting around this area. Um, so it would just be to maintain that area for bigger events. These three specific areas would be connected through a more uh, complete network as you can see outlined in red. And this would allow someone to be able to get their full um, part and be able to access the community at once. In the yellow, you can see the vacant public lots. Um, these can either be used to introduce new entrances as you can see at the lower end of the park, um, providing that access to that neighborhood below the park. And then also connecting some of the entrances that are already there, such as the historic steps um, around where the open space area was. There's a great opportunity right next to Patterson Park, labeled 11, which is the former uh, Roselle Elementary School. The idea for this space would be to find something that is complementary to the park, whether introducing more residential in there, um, maybe some parking if this uh, park ends up um, having more visitors or some other type of use that would require more engagement from the community. What exactly could be made from that space? The next uh, park is the MLK Civic Center. Um, as you can see, this park um, houses both the recreation center and in the back it has all the outdoor amenities. However, there's only two small entrances into this space and it's really hard to see what exactly uh, in there number one. This is the view from Shaw. It also has various amenities towards the back, such as a place set, which is pretty great positioning and fairly new. There's also a pavilion and some drilling areas uh, for smaller events, and also the track and field. Two of the most important two things that stuck out to us when we looked into this park is the amount of parking improvement that exists throughout the MLK uh, Civic Center and how much space is dedicated to car traffic. The idea is to make this a little bit more pedestrian friendly, allowing someone to travel from Shaw Avenue all the way to Elm Avenue safely and comfortably. One of the other things is looking at signage and route finding so people can see what type of amenities are within the Recreation Center, knowing how to get into the Recreation Center and also what um, amenities um, are behind the park itself. Replacing some of the um, pavement with a pedestrian way that would connect all the way through, and then also updating the surface material within the, um, under the place set. The next one is Holly Park. Holly Park is a smaller park, um, it's actually hard to See if you're not in there that the open park is within, uh, it's nested within a residential block and right along the Detroit Avenue. Detroit Park actually uh, having a lot of different improvements to it. Uh, labeled this one, this is the uh, second and the biggest entrance into the park, which is within a parking lot. They also have some amenities labeled as two, three, and four, which is the place set, which is recently done. Uh, and still in pretty good condition. There's a pavilion and there's also a different type of park, uh, which is in good condition. Again, as mentioned, it's kind of hard to see you that there are two um, if you're not actually in it. So a big aspect of this park is improving the entrances and also the visibility um, and access within uh, it to the park and within the park. This would include improving that entrance along the Detroit Avenue. Uh, by repaving the parking lot, making it smaller to make way for a pedestrian, a protected pedestrian way into the park. 
It could also include adding a new entrances either along North Main Road or Hastings Avenue. Um, again, that would be using the uh, public vehicle costs that were already there. And then also having a more uh, pedestrian network within the park. Currently, you would have to uh, traverse uh, within the districts of this. Also, improving some of the amenities that are already there, the basketball courts, restricting it to make it into a multiple use court. So then families could use it in different ways. And then also updating the service nature of the campus. Uh, another thing is improving lighting and uh, fencing along the main road. The next one is Mana Avenue Park. So this park is right at the border between Cleveland and East Cleveland. It is a completely messy between the residential neighborhood. Um, and we saw a lot of potential in this small park. Um, when we engaged community members, we mentioned um, knowing about Main Avenue, but not realizing it was a park. Also not feeling very safe or uh, not really um, using this space. As you can see, number one, there's a lot of uh, opportunity around the park as there's vacant lots. Some of the amenities there are not in the usual format, such as being a reasonable, so it's also the baseball. And then the sidewalk along the park is uh, slightly incomplete, but it, there is a great utilization. One of the things that I had just mentioned are the uh, vacant lots that are around the park. Currently, there is a dilapidated industrial building right south of the park. The idea would be to knock down that industrial building, create an open um, an open park space and expanding the park, creating a trail that would connect from East 133rd Street all the way down to Shaw Avenue, creating that passive uh, recreation and also helping people get through the park. Um, and as it connects to Shaw Avenue, it would create a network all the way to the MLK um, Civic Center, which is also along the park. An important part about this park is creating, um, identifying those boundaries between the residential park and the park. This would include some fencing, some landscaping, making it feel more comfortable and like a more official uh, space uh, for recreation. Another key feature is adding other amenities, such as the natural playground. Um, that is something that's been very new um, and has shown a lot of benefits, um, and it's also a lower cost option. There's also uh, an idea of including pavilions here to help uh, to provide space for families to gather and also create those uh, small get togethers. The next one is Superior Hill Park. Um, this was technically part of Forest Hill Park, but it was very much off-site. It's now in its own uh, park. Currently, right now, there are already um, improvements being done along that road. And because of that, there are already some planned improvements for Superior Hill Park. This includes um, improving the basketball courts, potentially adding pickleball in here, and introducing a uh, trail loop around the playground and adding some tables and lighting. Um, these were things that we did not put together. It was something I was told a town was already planning on doing. Um, it's still in its construction stage. Thank you. When we started the park expansion phase plan, it was during um, right as the pandemic hit. And we know that there has been talks about Forest Hill within the city. So what we did was we made generalized uh, recommendations. So the, so the next few slides is gonna highlight that. Um, Forest Hill is the 17th largest regional park in Northeast Atlanta. It has 175 acres. It's the second largest municipally owned and managed park in the region. We highlight this because of communities that have parks of this size in Northeast Ohio, most of those communities are, they have a, a high median in, like household income of about $55,000 or higher, and they're in predominantly white neighborhoods. In East Cleveland, the median household income is less than $55,000, and the majority of residents are, in the, are part of the black population. 
our general recommendations here would be to update Forest Hill Park using the assessment form from the various community groups like the East Cleveland Parks, East Cleveland Parks Association, um, begin fundraising, begin fundraising and um, fundraising strategies, implement an engagement and advocacy strategy to help to help with the maintenance costs, um, to help with maintenance and cost, determine a budget for staffing, and to try to identify the potential partners, organizations, and programs available to support the maintenance of Forest Hill Park. Flora is now going to go over the implementation toolkit that's part of the park vision. So we just went through a lot of recommendations, especially uh, system-wide recommendations, park specific. Now the important part is the implementation of it. How do we get this done? So for the implementation toolkit, um, it serves different roles. The first one, it's an organization tool. Um, we've already seen a couple of those. Um, the idea is to have strategy tables and also a checklist. Um, it's a living, breathing document meaning it should be revised, it should be uh, changed as time goes on and as funding becomes available or as partners are identified. And the point is to be able to use this plan as these changes come up. The, it also serves as a resource guide. So within the plan, we provide a list of potential partners, ones that you probably already have, but also some that you may uh, haven't quite partnered with. Also different funding types or funding options, and then specific funding sources and partners. There are also some additional considerations to make sure that um, some of the recommendations can be implemented. One thing that we typically um, recommend is establishing a plan implementation committee. This would be a group that would be dedicated to keep track of which recommendations are being done and where the plan is and what changes need to be made. Uh, this is important, especially um, as things change. The other thing that we mention is uh, the importance of hiring or dedicating someone as a grant writer. Um, there's a lot of recommendations in here that will take a longer time to implement and will require different partners and different grants. Having someone that's dedicating to keeping track of some of those timelines and having uh, the specific requirement for those grants uh, would be important and does take uh, a decent amount decent amount of time. So having someone that's dedicated to that uh, to provide more opportunities for the entity. Um, just an example of what the system-wide implementation tables look like. Here we um, only look at the strategies, not exactly the action steps. Um, and we look at the possible parties or um, partners for those strategies. And we also provide an estimate of the very generalized but the idea is to help the city be able to prioritize which strategies are going to be easier to implement and which ones might uh, require a longer time to implement. Here we have the connected implementation table and the community implementation table. As you can see, a lot of the connected recommendations have an estimated time cost, which would take a longer time. However, a lot of the community recommendations are either low cost that can be done internally or um, already have certain partners available for some of those um, recommendations. One of the things that Nicole had mentioned was some of those baseline recommendations, making sure that all the parks are brought up to a certain baseline to make sure that we're providing those improvements. Um, this system-wide checklist keeps that, um, helps the city keep track of that. So it outlines all of those baseline um, recommendations and also all the different parts so you can check off which ones have had all of these uh, improvements and which ones are still needed. Lastly, as I mentioned, the implementation section just serves as a resource guide. So these are just sample pages from um, the document, such as the potential partner list, the funding strategies. So this includes both internal strategies that the city can do or other things the city can um, help encourage its community members to get involved, either being a parks group uh, or also selling concessions at the park, which would be some of the parks 
out of use in there. Also, the external funding sources, so those specific grants, and then additional resources. So, so I actually have that pulled up here. These are three different resource guides that we found that could be very helpful for this region. The first one is the Parks, uh, Park and Recreation Professionals Guide to Fundraising. Uh, it provides a staff by the site to have a fundraising program updated to 2018, budgeting, development, park sales, and planning, identifying the provided sources. The next one is closing the gap, uh, public and private funding strategies. Uh, they look at, uh, they provide techniques and strategies that were put together based on best practices in different uh, parts of the region. And then the last, one is funding and resource guidebook that is actually done by, uh, by our agency. It's a library of grants, tools, and available assistance in Tri-Valley County. Um, it can be used to find funders that will take the project and make it into a success. These are, um, this provides funding, not just for the park, but also provides other funding uh, for the city for various things. And it categorizes the funding grants by time. Thank you for having us today um, and for allowing us to share the various things within this document. I know we just went through a lot of different recommendations and what that looks like for local communities in Cleveland. If you do have any other questions, yeah, I'm going to open up to the council with questions. I want to ask uh, uh, this past week, we voted for uh, Metro Parks to take over one of our parks. Uh, and I know uh, you educated me. I didn't know we had seven parks. I thought we had two or three. We have seven. I didn't. I didn't know that. M my concern is the funding, and I'll, and then I'll yield to my other council people. Are there other funding uh, options that we have besides the degree that listed in this in, in your document here? Are there other funding where we can get funding? And do you prioritize the seven parks that you prioritize? You recommend which one we should go with first? I know you said Fort Hill is, is the biggest one in the seven, is that correct? So what is your recommendation in that area? So for the funding, I was gonna mention the um, National Parks and Recreation Association mm -hmm. is a really great resource. They provide everything from engagement, to funding, to um, maintenance, they provide a lot of different resources. Um, we try to be as comprehensive as possible with funding strategies, obviously there's always more that can be gathered. Um, but one of the things that we were very, we wanted to make sure was not to mention which part to tackle first. I think that is up to um, the city and the up to us. side. Um, we wanted to make sure the plan was very flexible, understanding that funding, um, uh, whenever funding is available, just to use it across the park. Um, so as, as far as prioritization, mm -hmm. again, like Laura said, that's something up to the city, up to the residents to see which parks are a high priority. Which is a priority. But we do mention those baseline recommendations, which can make each park usable and comfortable for residents. Um, that was one thing that we wanted to make sure, at least to be able to highlight what are the ones that, if you could do anything, what you would tackle. And I'd say to start off with the baseline and then see which recommendations you can tackle either with what's available in terms of funding, but also what things can you remember to say no when you come up with that. And then also use the current condition um, portion of the plan where we did an inventory of each of the parks okay. and use that as, uh, as a guide you know, to, to look at what's needed in each of those parks and then maybe to, to update those as you go along So do we reach out to you guys for guidance and direction and recommendations or stuff that we're not that familiar with or the, the Kyle County Clinic, what is your specific role? Explain that to me. Our role, our role is to help to kind of be the in-between of the city and the residents. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we went out, we did community engagement, we talked to the city, and we kind of married that together and put those ideas down and had fun with it. So that's what the plan is. Kind of what the ideas of the city is and the ideas of the residents and try to match that together to have a guide for you into the future. Okay, I'll yield to uh, 
Můžeš blow back, please? I th I think first of flowers and native plants and trees and um, to hear a discussion several times of fencing, but not of plants is kind of a concern to me. And I'm, I'm wondering um, why there's no discussion of meadows or pollinators or you know the other things that uh, make a green space important to me. Sure, I'm really happy you actually brought that up. That is one of the action steps that we do put in there within the comfort section, something that we probably should have highlighted throughout. Um, the fencing was either, either because it was already there and something that should be fixed or in general to add um, more distinction between the but yes, landscaping is a very important part of the park. Um, that was something that community members mentioned a lot when looking forward to either the pollinators or the birds or just the natural aspect of it. So yeah. definitely. They've a recently part. planted uh, a number of pollinators in Forest Hill Park. And I think that's a, a big addition. Um, number two, when I think of getting places, one of the things I, one of my concerns is our roads and the traffic and the number of accidents. And it seems to me that if we took Terrace Avenue all the way from Forest Hill Avenue through Terrace, through whatever it's called on the other end and made it one way, for one thing, we would decrease the traffic there. The traffic in the morning is really quite horrible. And it's difficult to get from some of the little one block streets onto Terrace. And it would seem to me that if we made it one way going east-ish, and I know it's not exactly east, but east-ish, and then had the other side be a bike path and a walkway, that that would make our parks more accessible because there'd be a safe place to walk or bike on them from, from various locations. And for example, from Forest Hill Park to um, Collie Park. And the, it just seems like it fits with safe routes to school because it goes past uh, two of, of the schools and that it would be uh, a real addition to the whole thing. Another, this one's more of a question. How much have you discussed Patterson Park with NOAA, which is currently doing the maintenance of the park and associated with that? Why entrances, since there's really no barrier to entering the park? And when you talk about the steps and going to the Roselle area, are you aware that that does not belong to the city, that that belongs to the school district? So for, for the entrances, um, I should have been a little bit more clear. It's uh, more so connecting to, so you have the sidewalk around the park, and then there's also the trail within the park connecting the two, so people can walk along there. So the uh, steps, I believe that's not within that lot. Um, I believe that's part of the Roselle lot, but I'm not sure. I, we would have to double check, but I know when we looked, at least from the fiscal office, or from the fiscal office where they uh, looked at the different parcels, those were two separate parcels. I believe it was, um, I didn't check exactly with the stats, but the uh, Roselle elementary, I believe, was a Land bank lot. No, really, it's been changed to a land bank lot because it, it used to belong to the school district. Mm -hmm. We would have to double check that. But, the, but when we make the recommendation, it seemed like a logical connection to be people in from that, from that southern entrance. 
and use those stairs because they are there and they're historical and I don't think you would want to get rid of those stones. So no. I think you need to use that yeah. as one of the connections um, mm -hmm. in regards to the, the open entrances or the you know, barriers. We looked at that and that's kind of why we made a recommendation about making walking paths so that it's easily accessible. Like more eyes on the park is what makes it. And so that's another another reason So you think paths would make it safer? I mean, if you have visibility into the park, easy access in and out of the park, it'll make it a little bit. But safer. Patterson is completely visible from. So from the um, open space that we mentioned, there are it's there's a little bit of elevation and it's a little bit further back. So the path is very well defined on the southern part of the park. On the northern section, the sidewalk kind of drops off, and then there's no walking path. So the idea would be to continue that path. And then since there's a separation between where the sidewalk is and going into the park is connecting into an internal walker. So then you have um, an easier way of walking through the whole entire park so people aren't having to go through the grass um, in certain sections and can access the different amenities throughout the park. And the problem with walking through the grass is? Not necessarily, but if, you have weather events and also comfortability, um, depending on different people's ability to go through different terrain. It does help to have a defined walking path uh, throughout. Something that the obviously within the checklist, you could decide which parts would be more important. If the walking path that was something that was last priority, that would be something that would prioritize less. It would be the more expensive one, so that would take more time, anyways. But the other thing that would be important would be the programming, which you have mentioned has been done a lot over the past year. Um, next question. Under the Civic Center, you talked about updating the surface under the playground equipment. And when I think of updating surfaces, what I think of is the what they've done. For example, at the uh, Shaw High School football stadium, which is to put something that's considered a carcinogen uh, under the feet of our students. So I was wondering what you were referring to when you talk about updating the surface under the playground equipment. Sure. Uh, there are different types of materials, uh, something that we aren't professionals with, something that we uh, need a little bit more analysis, but there are different types of materials you can put in there from just mulch to uh, pellets. Um, and some of the materials that you did mention are uh, unfortunately in some of the parks, but something that you could definitely avoid it um, just to make it more safe at if a child falls off the play set, they're falling into something that's not functioning well. Um, so just something that would require a little bit more analysis to look at what would work best. Um, you talked about fencing at Holly Park, and what was the purpose of the fencing there? So Holly Park already has fencing around there. It would either to get rid of it or to put in something, a newer fence. It is completely nestled within a residential block on all sides. So something to uh, provide a little bit more privacy for the residential blocks or the residential uh, homes around it um, and the park. So something that's already there, but the fencing has been, um, it's not in the best condition. Or it could be done with plantings. That's true. Okay. Do you have any idea, and I, I, some of this is kind of small, so it might be in here and I, my old eyes. Um, do you have any idea of the cost to redo the basketball surface? I do not have a cost estimate for that. Not even a something that I know would probably be a lot. I know uh, the Chester Public Home has done a lot of that. That's kind of the idea that we got it from, uh, where they've taken either uh, paved areas and have done a lot of uh, just stripping to make them feel like they're used for. Um, so then it can be used in different ways instead of just one manner. Um, currently, the basketball court uh, is has a lot of vegetation coming through it, and it's a little bit hard to use. It would be very difficult to yeah. count on your basketball, dribbling your basketball costs, some of that stuff. It's it's a mess. 
Yeah, I was talking to somebody who teaches basketball skills about the possibility of using that. And I hadn't really um, paid much attention to the exact um, status of it, but I have looked a little more since then and it's obviously not ready. Okay. Um, yeah, Superior Hill Park, there are a lot of plans in, in process. So I, I think that's not so much to be um, done. Do you have any idea of the measurements of the industrial building or? Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, that is right next to the park. If you would be able to get rid of that and expand it, the that park. would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I come from Milwaukee, and in Milwaukee, virtually every area has a, its own little park. And one of the nice things that we're talking about to Brian Zimmerman, who now heads our metro parks, is that he knew my little neighborhood park, which was about two blocks by two blocks in, uh, and nobody, I mean, if, if, even if you lived in Milwaukee, if you lived a mile or two away, you probably wouldn't know about my little neighborhood park, but he knew about my little neighborhood park and that was, that was special. Anyway, um, thank you very much. Thank you. We have one more question from Councilman Ernest Smith. Go ahead, Councilman Smith. Thank you, Ms. Curtis. Thank you, Ms. Laird, Ms. Ortiz. Uh, actually, Dr. Pence, Ms. Dr. Councilman Blow, I took my question about the Roselle and I do offer due, due diligence about that. Well, uh, that's the, um, you said that the people over there by the man park, they said they feel unsafe by the man park off, off Hayden. I can, I can believe that. They said, uh, Different amenities would be added to that park. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking up this is from the park over there by man. Sure. So, um, again, these are all conceptual, um, just ideas that, uh, just based off the feedback of the community, they can see the concerns. Well, they said a few things. The couple things that we mentioned could be good for that, such as the major park um, and making it useful. For the residents there, but also for residents of the edge, uh, putting in place either pavilions or some seating there, um, tables. A natural park was something that we mentioned, but something that's become uh, more of become more of a norm currently of natural parks. I actually went to Chicago recently, and there's a natural park there, and it's used a lot. And it's shown to be, it's shown to have a lot of great benefits, either. Kids use it a lot more. There's more interactions among kids, but it's also a lower cost option um, than a um, set. So that was something that we mentioned for the man part. The other thing is uh, putting in a trail that could be within the back of the um, back of the park that would connect uh, from uh, Grand Bay Bridge Street all the way down to Shaw. Again, just creating more space for um, and one thing that I forgot to mention, the sidewalk that is there along the edge of the park is complete, so potentially being able to complete that sidewalk um, all the way up to, again, get more people to go into that park and uh, use it. Dr. the building down next door. That was the other thing, yes. <laughs> so that uh, industrial building is right up on that uh, edge, um, so being able to knock that down and create more open space for that part. Uh, would, would we be keeping or uh, making a new baseball field right there? You see the old gate right there? Yeah, so that was um, the, right now the only thing that is there left of the baseball diamond is the amenity there. Uh, if that were to be something that we really wanted in there, that was something that uh, would be open to the fencing that was mentioning for Man Park is more so along the hat, um, the behind the residential areas, again, to separate between uh, where the park is and where those uh, private homes are. The idea is to add more trees and landscaping within there as well, 
it's nice that you can see the whole part from the street, but also adding some of that. Uh, but the, um, do you remember any, any specific reasons why the residents here they they weren't safe for us? I think for the most part, people didn't realize it was a park. A lot of people didn't realize. It. So one of the things Talk that we men, men, so one of the things I didn't know it was a park either. Didn't know. One of the things that we did <laughs> did was um, have a map of all the parks um, and try to ask people which one's your favorite, with the, how many of them are you aware of, and the answer was one of those things. A lot of people were not uh, aware of, but one that we saw had a huge increase on the location that it's in, um, and just the amount of space that it's there, um, and the potential to be a place for other individuals and social residents to come and visit. Thank you very much. Now, we, we want you, we have two constitutes that are here, uh, can we have you guys come back uh, in about yes. two or three weeks? Okay. Thank you for your presentation. It's, it's pretty comprehensive, pretty thorough. So we got some uh, to talk to our residents and see what we come up with. So any recommendations for us before you guys go? Any recommendations for the council? If you have not had a chance to look at the plan itself, um, if you could let me know and I can look at it and send a copy of that to you. So that we can look through it. Okay. We also have hard copies tonight if you want to take a look at it. Okay, we, we got the hard copies. Of the plan? Yeah. The one that's 178 pages? No. Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we yeah, got the presentation. Oh, just a brief picture. We got the 178 document, huh? <laughs> we got that too. Yeah. A lot of that is the appendix, which is the current conditions part of it. Uh, so don't be too wary about the so with the seven parks in East Cleveland, how do you guys feel about it? As professional, how do you feel about it? We got seven parks in this little city of East Cleveland. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, and, and all your residents have access to those parks. Like they can I don't think a lot of them know that we got that many. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we got some work to do, don't we? Okay, we, we'll, we'll have you back in about two or three weeks, okay? Thank you guys, thank you very much. Okay, you guys did well, okay? Tracy, let's move to the next one. East Cleveland Parks and Greens Place plan, and we'll have Keisha come up. Okay. Thank you guys. Welcome to the great city of East Cleveland. Okay. All right. No, no. Uh, okay. I'll, they did, well, no. I wanted, before you go to that, Tracy, I wanted to get Keisha to come up about. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Right, go ahead. My, my mistake, right. Okay. Ordinance number 16, the amendment to ordinance number 1420 that authorized the mayor to accept an award of $2,520,242. Now the amount has risen to $2,913,760 from the City of Cleveland Division of Water, Suburban Water Main Renewal Program, SWMR, for water line replacement to support the engineering design and replacement of 7,795 feet of water lines along Euclid Avenue in sections from West Belvoir to Hastings and Superior to Forest Hill. Boulevard to Forest Hill Avenue from Superior to Idlewood and approving the expenditure of $1,918,177,018 of funds by the city towards the sole $4,831,937.81 bid of your construction company for the project. So, Keisha, can you? There's a lot of stuff here. We need to break it down and or make it so we can comprehend what's going on here. I, I see the the two million at the beginning and the four million. At, so kind of help us with this, please. Okay. So this is, that we can about. is this an award? Is, some of this is an award. Okay. So the two million portion reflects an award from the Cleveland Division of Water. Okay. okay. So we had first um, approached the Division of Water to replace water lines on Euclid Avenue. 
At that time, it was not a combined pavement water line project. It was water line only because ODOT was coming behind and doing the pavement work. Mm -hmm. So because of the time frame and how we kind of could not align the work, when we went back to Cleveland Water um, to be able to rebid this, it is now a water line and pavement replacement project. So the pricing has changed because now we need to um, account for the pavement. Okay, is that, did that bring the price from the two million to the four million? Uh, that does adjust that um, oh. the amount we will receive from Cleveland Water. How much of this is an award? Um, it is going to be in that 2.5 to 2.9 million range. Okay. I will verify that with Cleveland Water. Mm -hmm. Once we know for sure um, that this bid amount is absolutely accurate, like we need to go back through do some calculations, make sure that terrorists, you know, dot their eyes and cross their teeth. Okay. So once we verify their bid amount, then we will go to Cleveland Water and make sure that we have the correct amount that will be allocated from this. Right. We, we appreciate you coming. One thing we wanted to do too was the prices of everything keep going up. So we keep the land. That's why we met today. We want to try to get this thing going as soon as we can or three or four months that the price will be higher continue to Yes, this also the price is increasing, but mm -hmm. the time is increasing. Okay. So that was the main issue. Um, first, when we did this project out, um, we took the things that out of line time wise. All right. I um, mean, one of that being some materials um, being made and delivered. Uh, so now we have a better kind of handle on the time frame that's taken for us to receive the pipes. So, for example, the I see Forest Hill is in here, but I want to state that that is actually a separate project that Forest Hill Avenue from Superior to Idlewood Avenue, Idlewood Avenue, so it is that out of this language, that's a separate project. But for example, that was actually bid in February, awarded in February, but the material is just coming, we're just starting this project. So that gives you an idea of the time frame it's taking for these materials mm -hmm. um, to arrive. So you're saying we should take what section out again? Forest Hill Avenue. Okay. Is a separate project. All right. That's Thank you. Now, continue because when I spoke with you a week ago, we uh, and I know if it's just a part of this uh, walkable East Cleveland thing. I don't know if that's a part of this or not. Is this a separate situation? The walkable East Cleveland we talked about. Okay. All right. And that will include a walk walkability, multiple mobility component. Right. And that is in partnership with the Greater Cleveland Public Transit Board. Right. So they are looking at it from their perspective of busing. Um, when someone's at a stop, what are the modes of transportation that they have access to when they're at a bus stop? Are they scooters or bike paths leading to that bus stop, walking? Mm -hmm. So that'll come into analysis when we look at these. And it's a study only. Right. And that study will um, produce recommendations that we can uh, for the walkability and transportability. Right. Anything else? Uh, well, I'm going to get to the public in a second after the council people get an answer quick. Anything else that sticks out that the council needs to know about this? Um, sticks out. No, just be aware that after we make the recommendation for the award, that there will still be a Time frame, so this may not be a 2022 project. Oh, so it might be next year. Okay. okay, I'm going to open to the uh, council, Councilwoman Patricia Blowback. It's unfortunate that this was added here, okay, at rather the last minute from my point of view. All right. And it would have been ideal, considering the length and the complexity, to have had more time. It hasn't changed. What has changed is we had to rebid. So the information provided initially around the actual water main replacement project, all that information hasn't changed. We're still replacing the same pipes. We're still doing the same work, but we just we had to rebid it. So the technical information hasn't changed. But the, the numbers and something in the scheduling. 
But yes. you'll have to remember that when it first came to council, I was not part of that council. So um, this is new to me uh, and I'm concerned. I'd like to find out the reasons why the rest of the council, why some of the other counselors were not comfortable with the process the first time around. Are you aware of what their concerns were? I'm not saying that anybody was. Right. I don't think it was concerned. Process. It was we just didn't do anything with it. That's what happened. I don't think there was any concerns about it at all. Delay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you can. Know which month that that is. So we'll we'll, we'll I'll talk to you. November. Yeah. So I know it's in January. That's. It's in your thinking. You'll be able to nail it. Wonderful. Miss Chambers, any more recommendations? I thank you for com coming back out. Thank you for being so supportive to us here in East Cleveland. Any more recommendations? Any more suggestions to the council? Okay, any more, if there's no more questions, then thank you very much, Ms. Chambers. Thank you. And you'll be in contact with Tracy, okay? Thank you. All right. Uh, open to the public. We mark the public on, if you have any questions, Ms. Chambers is still here. Forty. You got it. Five, six, seven. Yeah. Law said one subject matter. Now you got one reference accepting money authorizing mail. Accept the award, right? Accept the award, Mr. Omey. Okay, all right. That's one. Yeah. That should be accepted. In reference to, then you got down here all of these streets to have. That should be accepted for Euclid Avenue, got one, got one for us. Yes, and whom you are receiving this award from as well. It should be in the same. You say it should be in the legislation, Ms. O'May? Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. You are receiving it from the Board of Department, and you are authorizing the mail to accept it. And replacing the uh, borderline, borderline replacement on mm -hmm. Euclid Avenue. Bellevue, Bellevue. Hastings, Hastings, Superior, DeForest Hill, right. Superior, right. Charter says, read to charter. One subject matter, and this is totally discombobulated. It was confusing to me. We will uh, consult with the law. We got an attorney here, when, and I mentioned it to uh, Willie Hemmings. So we're going to clean it, try to clean this up, okay? Thank, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Mey. Sir, you have something you want to say? Come on up. Uh, uh, this guy, uh, first. Go ahead. How are you doing, Mr. Clark? Okay, how are you, been, sir? All right. It's been two years since I've been up here. I know, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah I had a major accident. I'm not involved in stuff. Again, but oh, okay. Good to see you again, bro. Oh, For the know. record. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, for the uh, record, he wants your, your name. Should you say for yeah, the record? Okay. I'm Dr. Bohovia and Councilor Bohovia. She's new. She's new. She used to be on the CA, right? She was on the school board. Okay. 12 years uh, on the school board. Uh, the only thing in this, you know, in this, I'm kind of confused. She's still here, right? Okay, because you said uh, the sole bill was Cares Construction Company, correct? Okay, uh, you know, this language, when you put sole bill, it would be the person with the lead, it's just that, just that one person receives the lead. That 
word. So I've done, I've sent out DMs before. And have you sent the DMs to the MDE? Has the MDE attached to it? Open, open bid process, open plan bid, follows state of Ohio requirements. Um, and only one bid was received. And so that was Chairs Construction. So they're the only ones that out of everybody that was On time. Okay, I'm just, you know, I'll do a little bit more research than that because I know that a lot of minority business enterprises have been weeded out for a lot of things, especially when you talk about the uh, million dollar construction. And uh, the reason why I speak here is I have over 12 family members in some schools that and two family members that had businesses for over 50 years. Okay. And I come through here. I do everything. Uh, and a lot of this is bewildering to me. Mm -hmm. um, the mines, you know, including the Division of Water yes. and the Sewer Department mm -hmm. should take care of their pipes. If they're 100 years old, we should have then replaced them years ago. The majority of that, the bulk of that, should be attached to them because it's their pipes. It ain't our pipes. They got the Northeast Ohio Sewer District. Mm -hmm. They're kicking out millions, putting all of these tunnels and everything else, you know what I'm saying, on property. Uh, to me, it's, you know, it's ridiculous, these millions and millions and millions for this water and sewer. And then by the same token, when they get to the street, they start on the street. I got a brand new Jeep. And going down the, on one side, potholes and everything mm -hmm. else, it don't matter when they tear up the street. My whole thing is, they slow at doing it. I've watched them. They're not on. They're not working. They don't care about the potholes and everything on one side of the street while you're fixing the other. But they're so dangerous and so deep when you ride down there, especially hitting through East Cleveland. It come in Euclid. It's taking them forever. But they only got one side deal. And then when they do the one side, they put the black top over there where it's big pump. Coming over there instead of fixing it like it's supposed to be smooth, it's just it's just it's ridiculous and it's, it's dangerous to cause. But you know this this ordinance for all of this money, you know for this here is just it's ridiculous to me. You know what I'm saying it's it's just ridiculous and I just had to voice that. I appreciate everything you're doing though because it's not only me that's necessary, been necessary up here. It's about that money and that that company. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to be bound to do this like it's supposed to do, not that layoff, like I see them in trucks for hours and hours kicking it while you're supposed to be doing your job. Yeah. You got nobody watching them. You got a, a AWP security truck there. I watch it all. I got it all on video. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. And I called on them and said, hey, ain't no lunch break in the world. Two hours, two hours and a half. <laughs> And you sitting up there talking and you got no supervisor or nothing. But the streets is messed up. You know, so thank you very much. I met appreciate you. your comments, sir. Appreciate you. Good seeing you again. Okay. Tricia okay. will be reaching out to you. I um, have Tracy be in contact with you, and we're gonna meet with the legal people to get the language right per uh, recommendation of Ms. O'Mays. Okay. If there's nothing else, I'm gonna adjourn the meeting. Anything else we need to discuss? If not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comment. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you.